Streaming, 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 and go! Oh, really? No. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So no. Okay. I can do this. Not at all. I can do this. Here we go. Okay, ready? Five, five, five four, start. four, three, two, one. We're just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you do that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else. Have yeah, to absolutely, to because I can't think it's either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Good evening, O'Reilly Radio listeners. Welcome to O'Reilly Radio 129, recorded Friday, October 14th, 2016, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversation that makes you go, oh, really? I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I've got my usual suspects. I've got Stephen Griffith. I've got Fred Sims. And wait, wait, who is this visage of loveliness? It is. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Amber B. Secker. Um... And I'm here to hang out with everybody else today. <laughs> I, I, I do believe we have officially got a vagina American on the show. Seriously, 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 you went there. Okay, I went there. I'm giving the Colonel electro. Shut it down. Shut, shut it down. We're starting. Over. Shut it down. <laughs> we have ways of shutting these things down. Is that what you're saying? Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll mute my microphone in shame. No, 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 not, not yet. At least, not yet. Okay, <laughs> not yet. We're done. <laughs> Alrighty, so before we get into it, uh, audience feedback from previous shows. I don't really have any notes to give you other than the notes that I figured out myself, which was some of the audio really stank. So I'm working on that, making things as better as possible, um, which is why we're actually starting the show about half an hour late. Uh, not to mention, I can I can certainly blame the giant DDoS that's happening across the, the nation. We had to switch back over to uh, Google Hangouts just to get anything working at all. Skype was... Uh, pretty much offline and unusable. Uh, it was crashing terribly. So uh, if we make mistakes, because of course we will, we're human. So please, if you find one, pause the podcast and send us a note. Oh, really radio podcast at gmail.com or phone it in at 470-222-6759. We'll also take text messages too, you know, just in case you're afraid of actually speaking. So, but if you do speak, maybe I'll even play it on the air. So, you know, roll those in, roll those in. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> introductions are in order. We have a new panelist, Amber. Uh, according to the bio that you provided and that is out on, uh, on your publishing website, you are an author, an editor, an actress, an activist, and you have a background in game design and criminal investigations. You're passionate but rational. You have a reputation for uh, devastatingly thorough research and creative cursing. You drink. Yes, all those things. You drink and you know things. And rumor has it that you are not to be fed after midnight. So yeah, don't do that. Just don't do no. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wonderful. It sounds like you're going to going to mesh very well with uh, with this mess of merry men. Uh, what uh, what 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 on earth actually uh, compelled you to say yes to to my offer to come on the show? Um, well, I used to, <laughs> I used to be on um, the Rollins College radio station WPRK mm -hmm. um, back in like 2011, 2012, somewhere around there. Um, and we did a lot of like roundtable discussion about politics and current events, um, things of cultural significance. Um, and that was uh, that was really enjoyable for me. Um, it's kind of an outlet for uh, when I'm between acting jobs. Um, that I get to, you know, kind of perform in a way um, through uh, through audio. Um, so I thought it would be fun to, to get to do that again. Sounds perfect to me. Um, so since this is actually the first time I believe that we're speaking, uh, we may have, you know, rubbed elbows at some point uh, down the line, but. Uh, Let's say this is our first time. So, hi. My name's hi. Ed. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's show 129. Uh, if you have been listening, then you kind of probably already know who we are. But should you somehow have, uh, you know, just kind of followed Amber in, 
and <laughs> and this is your first time on the show. Uh, we should probably do a little bit of roundtable, just to you know, round robin, go through and introduce ourselves. So, I'm the host, Andy Cowan. Uh, this is this is my my show and my uh, my brainchild, as it were. Uh, o R L Y is just the meme for O oh, really, which is the name of the show. So things that make you say O oh, really, I kind of introduced that. It very similar to you. I just wanted an outlet to speak rationally and rant on occasion about whatever was going on in the world and it seemed like we needed that kind of outlet and uh well i'm a geek with a techno lust and i've got a lot of equipment and hardware and uh i'm not afraid to use it so mm. and i'll just enhance that when i need to so uh this is a this is a little passion project of mine though if you really want to uh, contribute to the show there is a patreon p a t r e o n dot com slash oh really radio should you wish to contribute on an ongoing basis okay enough self promotion there so um uh, if you need to know anything about me at all I'm pretty much an open book so you know go ahead and email the uh, the podcast or email me directly all my links are out out in the web page um, I am a technologist basically so I've got a background in theater and all sorts of things, technical, and, uh, wow, I don't even know what to say about myself anymore. I've got a <laughs> uh, father, uh, former husband. In fact, uh, my ex-wife is, is now married to, uh, to that guy down there. Yeah, that, that would be me. So that's, that's probably a more unique thing, unique aspect to the show that, uh, you know, it would be that you would be like my brother-in-law, but you're so not. Yeah, uh, there's not really. There's a title for that, but it's not for this show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, with with that, um, Fred, you're next. Uh, yeah, <laughs> beep, beep. and that that really is is the most ringing endorsement to to introduce me. I guess is um, for those that don't know me personally, that are listening and don't know me personally, I've been described recently as a snarky uppity prick um and that was by <laughs> someone who uh wants to be a member of my family so <laughs> i can imagine what strangers feel um that r realistically um i like to be right um and i like to prove i'm right through logic and facts um logic and reason pretty much rule just about everything i do i am devoid of emotion most of the time um because things work easier for me if they're logic, um, logical and, and, and reasonable. Um, I met Andy, as he said, through his ex-wife, my now current wife, um, started listening to the show, really enjoyed all the conversations I was hearing, talked to him about being a part of it, and he jumped at it. Um, I would consider Andy a very good friend of mine. Um, you know, and I think this show has definitely um, helped grow that um, since we met. So. You know, I just kind of enjoy getting to talk to the different people, having met Stephen, having met Daniel, uh, David when he's around. Um, the same could be said about me. I'm, I'm not always around schedule-wise lately has been kind of rough. But, um, you know, I just I love this show. Um, I'm developing kind of a passion for podcasting. And, um, you know, just taking everything in and, and kind of learning. I'm going to be working on some things that I might talk about later. So we'll, uh, we'll get to that. Excellent. Excellent. And of course, you've got you've got an interesting background with uh, law enforcement, and uh... yeah, um, two and a half years of corrections work in, in the jail here in Brevard County. Um, you know, my best friend has been, uh, or he's current sergeant for the Melbourne Police Department. Basically, when he went through his training, I was there with him, pretty much every step of the way. You know, like I helped him with some of the uh, educational stuff. He got his degree through UNF, so I got to experience some of his experience while he was up there. Um, and it, if it's not something I've experienced personally, him and I have probably discussed it, argued it, debated it, um, come close to blows over it. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say subject matter expert, but I, I do my best to, to learn as much as possible. Well, so. keep, keep in mind that the subject matter expert, according to nine out of ten subject matter experts, is the person in the room that knows the most about the subject. <clears throat> And if you ask me, I know the most about just about any subject because snarky, uppity prick. There you go. So, uh, <laughs> speaking of snarky, uppity pricks and subject matter experts, Stephen Griffith. I, I'm, I'm glad. That's a good segue. Just, just <laughs> <it here>. um, <laughs> uh, nothing but professionalism here. <laughs> well, yeah, for those out there who've not heard my dulcet tones before, um, 
I'm Stephen Griffith. I'm a political scientist, uh, graduated from UCF with a bachelor's degree. I've been at least aware of politics and screaming at the TV and senators and representatives and judges for better part of a decade now. Um, before then, you know, I really came in political knowledge when it came to the Clinton era. Uh, I'm also heavy into technology. I've built most of the computers I've used over the last several years. I love online gaming. I have a regular weekly tabletop games as well, uh, into miniature games. Uh, also, again, I love being on the show just because it's it. It allows me to finally have a soapbox where I can reasonably assume at least one person is listening to me rant and might actually agree with me, <laughs> which is important. Yeah, at least a little also, bit. Also, we'll, we'll challenge you, too. Who, yeah, there's a group of people who, if I happen to be wrong, will call me on my bullshit, but will do it correctly in a constructive manner. We do what we can. <laughs> Unlike, well, the majority of people I deal with who are tend to scream, you're going to hell, what's wrong with you? Um, I th America. I think you're hanging around the wrong people. If that's the case. <laughs> I troll conservative forums. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I so troll them with the troll, right damn it. Okay. That works. Excellent. Well, I thank you all for being here, because otherwise I'd be talking to myself. And that's lame. So Sometimes it's the only way you can have a good conversation. Yeah. And don't sell yourself short. I've heard those episodes. They're not that bad. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I guess I was talking to you then. <laughs> so Secretly. At least, so at least there's that. Whispering, in your, whispering sweet nothings in your ear from the past. Well, that, that would be the ASMR podcast, and I'm not doing any of those. <laughs> Yet, I guess. I could do that. You know, get, get a nice, rich voice. You know, drop a few octaves and, you know, just read the ingredients on the back of a box or something <laughs> for like 40 minutes. That could work. So you're going to do a voice on a podcast, it's going to be the Swami, so... Oh, the Swami Pastrami? Yes! yes. <laughs> at, some, at some point, we will have to bring him back. Well, Hopefully I'd, not within the next three weeks. I do still have <laughs> my giant tinfoil turban kind of thing. The pyramid hat. So I, I can always switch into that mode if I need to. But, you know, uh, the holidays are coming up, and, and, you know, all I want for Christmas is a tinfoil turban. That would be fantastic for the Swami Pastrami. See if uh, we can pull it off. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen, though. Could be fun, though. Okay. It might just be silver lycra. So things that, uh, that don't require a whole lot of coaxing to be conspiratorial. Let's talk about that last presidential debate, shall we? Parts of it, yeah, because I only was able to pay attention to parts of it. Because sadly, I wasn't able to actually witness the whole thing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Mostly, well, kind of. All you I, I nearly, know the I, most important thing is... You can't polish that turd. <laughs> I, can't I watched the second. That. Oh yeah, that I was started, amazing. Oh Dear God, really? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who was it that said it, Fred? I can't uh, I can't what, remember his that, name. Um, Van. Um, I want to say his name. Hold on. Was it on CNN? Yes, it was on CNN. It was on the after show. It was one of the pundits after the after the debate said that you can't polish that turd. <laughs> He's right. That's Van Jones here. unloads on Kaylee McNanny uh, for defending Trump. You can't polish that turd. <laughs> just amazeballs. Although, if you just put you polish that turd into Google, you'll get a, a response that says, can you polish a turd? Well, <laughs> you can, depending on what matter is in the turd. Is that like the title of the Breitbart article that goes along with that story, or that should well, just this, be the byline? To this one's on Slate, <laughs> and it does go along with the. Uh, oh, apparently the show MythBusters proved it in a mm -hmm. 2008 episode in which they explored the Japanese art form of Doro Dango or making shiny balls out of mud. <laughs> Isn't it amazing that there, there's a thing there? There's a name for that. I the Japanese time to be alive. do all kinds of weird shit. I love the culture, but I also accept mm -hmm. your jit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yes, um, I don't know if you guys can hear the audio. Let me see if I can play it, and it'll it'll go through. I know that somebody will, will at least hear it. Uh, come on. Come on. Uh, by the way, the Internet today is horrible. Oh, here we go. You know, this is a really sad night. I'm just going to say it. This is a very sad night for the country. Um... You can't polish this turd. This is, I'm sorry. 
you cannot, technically, you cannot polish any turds. <laughs> yes, exactly. But I'm just saying, look, I'm, I'm going to be very, very clear about Fact that. Fact check. Uh, Al Gore respected the Constitution. We did not hear that. Respected yeah, I didn't get anything. Respected every voter, went to our Supreme Court, okay. asked for then since you you guys aren't getting it um okay so <laughs> it was um oh anderson cooper uh said technically you can't polish any turd and that's when we said wrong um, oh. <laughs> you know just that you know doing the trump thing because he did that several times during the debate during um, the debates mm -hmm. yes during the debates plural all of them um lots of interjections um one of the one of the websites that was analyzing uh, had a chart of interruptions where, and then like interjections or mm -hmm. so, something like that. So the the interjections were were huge, uh, <laughs> whereas the the actual I'm taking taking the reins and taking over the whole thing just with an interruption. Uh, well, Trump still had miles on Hillary. Uh, it was really impressive, actually. I mean, I can hardly be upset. I'm just impressed. He was able to do that, That's but he said he nothing. Speak. He said nothing. Mm -hmm. Of course, she said little too. But that's the nature of the debate. I think by the third debate, and and the fact that almost all those questions, with the exception of maybe focusing on the more recent WikiLeaks um, information were all questions that we have either heard, talked about, uh, someone else, listened to someone else talk about, or developed on our own over the past year. Yeah. You know, they were all, you had posted something on Facebook about someone complaining about Trump uh, with the rigged and she was given the questions beforehand. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know that those were the things going in, you still would have been able to knock them out of the park because you've answered them over and over and over again. Yeah, they weren't really unique questions. At all. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing that makes them unique is his debate style. The fact that she can answer a question in the negative to something that he said literally weeks ago, and he will argue it like it never happened. Yeah. And so that allows her the ability to play off of off of his response you know i i think it was in the second debate you know i, I made an attempt at, at doing the live tweet thing just kind of tweeting out two things i was hearing um and, and one of the things i said towards the end of the second debate was you know hillary at this point just start saying things that he would agree with so that when he <laughs> says wrong over and over and over again he's killing his own campaign well he's yeah he's been rather double speakish on on so many things especially you know with once Pence has come into the mix, not, they're playing off each other. Where it's like, no, he didn't say that. No, he didn't say that. No, I, I haven't spoken with him about that. It's like, really? Which is another thing. Like, you were three weeks away from the election. Why the hell <laughs> are the two of yeah. you not spoken? Should be well, Hannah, it's also the, 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 the Pence and Trump both. It's like, do you not understand how internet work? Do you not understand how video work? We can literally pull up what you said three weeks ago or the tweet you put out that you're now saying you never put out or and quote it back to you or a decade ago on Howard yeah. Stern. I mean, come on. You've been in the public being recorded because you're a narcissistic prick. You can't help it. You're always going to be on the air somewhere. And, you know, they record that stuff. And that's kind of a fascinating aspect that um, Bernie Sanders had touched on a little bit. I think it was during the second debate where he was like, I, I really genuinely think that this might be pathological for Trump, mm -hmm. that he literally cannot help himself because it's not like we can't just go and pull the tweet. We can do yeah. that. Um, but even in the face of that, he'll continue to deny that that's what he said or that's what he wrote, even though it's literally in front of him. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, how can you even do that? Well, it, it goes even further than that. It's not just in relation to him. Look at um, his response in this debate to questions about the women that have accused him of mm -hmm. you know, sexual assault again. And to state, I've never met any of these women, I've never seen any of these women, then talk about the woman that was on the plane next to you in the same breath, mm -hmm. in the same breath you brought this shit up. <laughs> like you literally just said, I've never met or seen with my own mm -hmm. half-closed eyeballs these women. <laughs> 
and then you bring up the woman on the plane next to you, and you deny the woman who wrote a Time Magazine article on your ass. Like, that's big news. That, like, you, you know, that's not like you find it in the rag section at Walmart. That's like a legit magazine that's been around for a long time. I could just go back through my library, find it, and be like, hey, do you, do you remember her? Because she was there. <laughs> it... I mean, it's, it's funny, ah, it's so funny. but it's also terrifying, you know, because oh, yeah. you look at, he says these things, and, and there are things that any logical, rational human being with half of a brain cell bouncing around the inside of their skull would recognize. I think she as, just gave my bio. <laughs> <laughs> as, you know, absolute nonsense. But you read, you know, the, the response from, from people online who are Trump supporters, and it's literally anything this guy says, they don't care. You know, they go right along with it. You know, yes. they, they buy into the idea that these women are coming forward, you know, however many of them there are now. I think it was up over a dozen the last time I checked. But yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. They're just coming forward to as part of a conspiracy from Hillary's campaign and she's paying them to... I mean, I was so drunk during the third debate and I was I was <laughs> doing a live feed of it on, on Facebook drunk. Which is um, why you're I, here, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I figured. I figured. That was your audition that. piece. <laughs> Excellent. Um, that, that's me at my best. Um, and I, I mean, I had to be to, to handle any of that. But, uh, you know. <laughs> I agree. Wholeheartedly. I, I just can't. I, I can't figure out what it would take to make these people realize what's going on, or if it's that they realize what's going on, but they don't care. And that to me is more terrifying, not the fact that they might be uneducated, but that they might be that apathetic toward, you know, the litany of, I'm trying so hard not to curse. So we're gonna go with go nonsense ahead. again. Uh, the, the, the litany of utter bullshit that Everybody. Trump spews <laughs> at all moments of the day. Yeah, I've, <clears throat> I wonder if it's just sheer cognitive distance or if, um, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's this. I can't fathom a one issue voter. No, I, I can't wrap my head around how one issue could possibly negate all the other baloney that is being spewed out there. Well, I would say I can, but not in a situation like this. In a situation where both candidates are fairly equivalent with minor differences in policy, you know, like what it's been before Reagan. Previously, yeah. Um, you know, then it's like, okay, this one issue is my make or break thing, because for the most part, there's not much variation yeah, between both and how it's going to go. When the Since, candidates were both pretty centrist, it was, you know, yeah, yeah, fine. But now, especially, you know, starting with Reagan, going into not Bush 1, but Bush 2, w. and Trump, it's, no, the, the, they've, they've split so much, and they are so radically different. One issue cannot make me go, well, I'm going to forget everything else this person is doing and done and what they're saying, and still vote for them because of this one issue. Because they can't agree with everything else they're doing. I mean, it would depend on the issue. You know, there there are some on the extreme side of things where you, you would have to, you know, again, extreme examples of like, this person doesn't support the Civil Rights Act of 1964. I'm probably not going to vote for them. Um, that kind of thing. I'm pretty sure that would be the Republican platform. In fact, I yeah, found it around here. I could look what it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's what yeah. it is these days, which is, yeah. again, both hilarious and terrifying yeah um even regardless of who's wearing the meat suit uh that, that's up there on stage i just looking at the party platforms because we did we did uh, God, positive did coverage it. of what is in the party platforms uh here on the show you can you can look at look back up uh, we've got a, a lovely search feature on the web page at o-r-l-y-r-d-i-o -O -O uh where you can just punch in party platform and you can you can watch us go through it painstakingly and even download the links. I, I copied them from their original source so that they're on the website so we'll never lose them uh, because they might try to burn them all. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, especially after this. So with um, just reading through the platforms, there is no way I can vote red. It's absolutely unconscionable to do so. Mm -hmm. I don't care 
who is wearing the ribbon. It doesn't matter. The, what they are standing on is a burning platform. Well, I think that was, that was shown to us when they had like 17 candidates and not a single one of them was worth a damn. Yeah. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter who's wearing that mantle anymore. It's just the, you know, same shit in a different package. Well, I would say of the 17 that they originally had, there was one that was actually worth a damn. And that was Jeb in comparison to all the rest. By comparison. Yeah, I'm saying by comparison, yeah. Jeb was the most. This is a politician. He was at least bilingual. Yeah. <laughs> Heb. Yeah. Well, Rubio Heb. was too. Yeah, but Rubio bot just downloaded those files, and then he, <laughs> then he had to maintain his lubrication levels, and he failed. You know, um, realistically, he I mean, went back you guys, to reboot. You guys said something that that actually makes a ton of sense, um, and it, it was said um, with a lot of hyperbole. Is that they're standing on a burning platform, and that platform was constructed in the '50s, and the burning yeah. is eating up all that lead paint and asbestos <laughs> and getting into their heads asbestos and causing the them, yeah, you know, <laughs> causing them to have these ideals that we still live in a time that has not progressed past separate but equal. You mm -hmm. know, it, it's that's they yeah. keep taking a step back for every step forward the Democrats take, and it unfortunately causes the Democrats to take a step back because yep. they have to try and meet somewhere in the middle of these two completely different ideals. Otherwise, they'll never get anything done. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that tactic worse. is oddly working for them right now. Um, you know, well, the, the other Steven? thing... Steven, oh. your, um, your audio has diminished dramatically. I'm not sure if it's just uh, Hangouts trying to automatically fix the audio. <laughs> Sorry, folks, there's only so many things that we can do uh, when things try to help. They usually end up screwing things up. When we've got all the manual controls, they, they want to do things automatically, and it screws everything up. So uh, just talk more, and your voice will get higher, most likely, because that's just how How's the sound now? Much better. Yeah. That's probably because I had my hand here. Ah, yeah, don't do that. Have to remember that microphone. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Block your mic. Okay. I'm sorry, no, Fred. You were, I'm saying it's beyond... I agree with what you're saying, Fred, but I'd say it's almost even – it's worse than that beyond that because we've now gone 50, 60 years past that you know, 1950s platform. We now also have that wonderful like gilding of nostalgia of that time on top of that. So it's – Well, obviously you can't have a, a platform that's make America great again if you don't have a nostalgia for a time – that was terrible for most of America and never mm -hmm. technically existed. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing Idealized. that we kind of touched on and, and it was just something that I'm sure you've seen, um, Steven, because you are self admitted a, a troller of conservative websites. And it was something that we just briefly touched on is, um, I, in fact, I believe Amber said it, that she's just, she doesn't know for sure whether or not it's these people actually believe this or if there's something else. And, and really, from what I've seen online, there are two truths. Okay, so what I can go online and find factual, credible sources that back up the information I try and provide in any of these conversations is a truth. To me, it's the only truth because I can find factual, credible sources. But the other side of the argument has their truth and they will cling to it vociferously. Mm -hmm. They will not let go of it regardless of whether or not you can provide them sources that are factual or they provide you sources from Fox News and Breitbart. Like. Yeah, well, yeah. Recent, uh, recent studies have, have come out and said that basically the, the ideology of conservatism is rooted in feelings, not in facts. Which is so funny because they proclaim to be the opposite. And and two things I kind of wanted to say about that. I was listening to you guys um, as you were touching on some things like, um, you know, like the, the two truths thing. Um, really, when you get into that level of conservatism, there is a very, and I, I don't mean this in a hyperbolic way. I don't mean this in, a, in an off-the-cuff way. I mean this in a, a very serious, literal way that they kind of ascribe to the tenets of a cult. And mm -hmm. one of the tenets of a cult is, you know, you can't trust information from the outside. 
And so what they do is when you post anything from any source that isn't something like Breitbart or, you know, one of the shock jocks like uh, Rush Limbaugh or, you know, whatever the case may be, their immediate like knee jerk instantaneous reaction is to parrot what they've been told, which is you can't trust the mainstream media. You can't trust MSNBC, CNN, uh, Al Jazeera, um, any of Snopes uh, is just two fat people in their basement. Yeah, I trust it, them. Yes, exactly. Uh, and Snopes, Wikipedia, places with actual mm-hmm. sources that can back up the information they're providing. Yeah, it's like it's a exactly. cited reference. Rush and Limbaugh just... is not his own source. <laughs> no. Exactly. The EIB um, network is not a not a trusted source. You know, I'm sorry. It's just not. And it looks like uh, we're getting some kind of uh, commentary on a feed here um, from somebody who was just saying the people I know aren't even looking at the issues. They just hate all Democrats. And what that reminded me of was um, the musical Hamilton. There's a great line where Hamilton is trying to put forth his um, his financial plan and Jefferson and Madison are opposing him. And Washington is like, you need to, you got to get the votes. There's nothing I can do. And he's like, sir, they don't have a plan. They just hate mine. And yes. that's very much the situation I feel like the Democrats are in is the, the the other side, you know, they don't have any type of plan or nothing that's feasible or viable in any way. But does the, anybody the, know what the Republican plan is after they repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare? Again, yeah, the question we've been asking for eight years is, you, know, you want to replace it? OK, cool. With what? Yeah. Well, I and, and in that we're up for better ideas. I don't want to have this sentence have too much credibility, but in that, <laughs> I will give the smallest amount of credit to Trump because at, at least at one point, when pressed on that question, he did say that um, when it's repealed, it will just be replaced with it going back into the hands <laughs> of you know, the states to decide and then insurance companies will be able to, he, he laid out the smallest of plans, which mm-hmm. was essentially the shitstorm we left. So of all the Republicans yeah. who have ever tried to repeal, there was something there. Somebody got in his ear and said, Hey, by the way, at least mention that there used to be a system before this and that that's what we'll be going to. Cause that was great. We'll make America great again. We'll just let the insurance companies decide our death penalty. Exactly. Yeah, and I think I think the only thing that he said he would do differently was he would allow insurance companies to sell across state lines. I think that's what he said he would open it up. Yes. Yeah, which is going to be even more terrible. But I mean, well, then, I, I do see yeah, your point you that yes, at least he had a plan. It's a terrible bad plan, but he had it. Yeah, and it, and like I said, it's the smallest amount of credit only because in all of the attempted repeals that have been laid out from various Republicans. That is the only time I've ever heard even the semblance of a replace, which isn't a replace. It's just a reinstate. Yeah, I I would like to mention just, you know, that the Affordable Care Act is modeled after Romney Care. Mm -hmm. You know, it's actually already a Republican plan. It is a Republican plan, and and that gets overlooked a lot. Just just thought I'd point that out again because of reasons. Anybody so, who thinks it's not a Republican plan, just look at the fact that it requires buying of corporate products. Yeah. Lots of corporate products. And uh, if you guys tune in for some of the other uh, other shows, we're going we're gonna to cut it up again like we did last week. Where, you know, that way it's in easily digestible segments um, where some will show up later in the week in, in your uh, RSS feeds if you subscribe to the show. Which, of course, you should. You know, go go out to iTunes and subscribe to the show and leave us a, a nice review. That would be lovely if you could. Uh, so we'll we'll get into some of the other things that uh, the insurance companies are are up to. There was something horrible, uh, so you'll see that in the bad bad news. I think. Oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> can I bring up my, my funny sticking point that I've seen a number of times mentioned yeah. about this, this debate? Yeah. Which I threatened. I, I was just bringing it back <laughs> to the debate. So yes, carry on. That's fair. Is. Yeah, I've seen this about. I've seen a number of my conservative friends and people I know on Facebook freaking out about. It. I've seen this be blasted now across those conservative forums that I troll about how, oh my God, Hillary's released classified information about our nuclear response time. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, we should talk about that first. Yeah, let let me mention to everybody here: if you did not grow up in the '80s, congratulations, you didn't live with a fear of imminent nuclear annihilation every second of your life. <laughs> yeah. 
I grew up in the 80s. The, the post-Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> we knew then, as a child, I knew the nuclear response time for both the United <clears throat> States and Russia. Yeah. It was drilled into us. It was the idea of, again, to going back to what she said during the debate for the people out there who did not see that, she said that essentially we have a... Move that mic. The United has a four-minute response time for a nuclear strike. Steven, yeah. move, that, move that microphone close to your face. No, it's just... I can't. That. It doesn't go side to side. Oh, curses. I gotta use my right hand. <laughs> right hand only. Only right hand. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She said that the United States has a four-minute nuclear response time. Yeah. And people are freaking out. Going, oh, my God. Isn't this that is, classified? Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah, You're giving away national what? secret. Rule number one. No, this is not actually classified. And if it is, do you know how much classified stuff there is out there that is actually public knowledge? Like, acknowledged public knowledge? Too much. Two... The idea of having a four-minute response time and having this is, and I will pull a quote from Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> the point of having a doomsday machine is to tell everybody about it. <laughs> yes. Because the four-minute response time is a key doctrine, and no, everybody knowing your response time is a key doctrine of MAD, which is mutually assured destruction, which means go ahead, feel free, launch your nukes at us, yeah, yeah. You're going to kill us, but our things are going to be in the air, and you're dead, too. Yeah. By the, time, by the time we notice that you fired on us, all of our birds will also be in the air, and then they'll just be waving at each other as we come down for the mutually assured destruction. Yeah, there'll be two ships passing in the night, and then a lot of flashes at the dock when yeah. they land. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. But it, it, it's the, the insanity of these people flipping their minds and the fact of, oh, look, Hillary once yeah. again revealing classified data. It's like, this this, this isn't classified. This isn't a problem. Yeah. I want everybody to know our response yeah. time. Because that will stop seems, those governments from firing at us. This all seems uh, very much like it's just grasping at straws. Like I mean, every, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, everything that they've done is just grasping at straws. I mean, all the, all the deals with, uh, with her email server, when... It had already been done in previous. Jeez, how many offices had it already been done in? Uh, I swear had... to God, I I almost rolled my eyes into oblivion when when <laughs> pressed when pressed Donald Trump, uh, you know, deflected from the question about I believe it was when he was being questioned about sexual assault and was like, you know what, I would really like to talk about her emails, and I'm like, oh please, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. I remember rolling my eyes vividly now. Well, the second debate, it, it was, here's about sexual assault, but do you realize ISIS is beheading people? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, to, to priorities, answer, people. Priorities. To answer your question, uh, it is known that a private email server had been done since Colin Powell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It now, may have been done earlier than that, but that is the definite we can confirm. Colin Powell onward. Now, that's the just with the, had a, And that's just the Secretary of State. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go back a little little further, the the Bush administration, uh, I think it was W, uh, yeah, deleted something like twenty two million emails. Mm -hmm. Yep. But we don't talk about that. At least the Republican conservative crowd, they don't talk about that. That's not even on their radar. Uh, just some other numbers since we're sh spouting them out. During the Bush administration, there were thirteen embassy attacks with sixty six deaths. Three American diplomats were killed, 22 embassy employees were killed, and there were no investigations. During the Reagan administration, there were 10 embassy attacks, 318 deaths, one U.S. ambassador killed, 18 CIA officers, and 254 Marines. Oh, there was one investigation there, at least. And during the current administration, there were two attacks, two embassy attacks, and there were four dead. And there have been, so far, 13 investigations. The cost to the taxpayer for this uh, witch hunt was, is estimated at $14 million. $14 million basically to keep the opposition candidate as far away from the White House as possible. It's all grasping at straws. They don't. She has the experience, and 
any time that they go over to to Trump land and try to you know espouse his his credibility his <laughs> wow I I have no words there are no words. I, yeah I'm I'm out of all the he's used all the good words apparently already all I don't the best have, words he's used all the best words so I'm out uh, but anytime you look at him it all just falls apart you know it's it's a sandcastle at high tide. <laughs> a, a, a stack of cards in the wind. It doesn't matter. Whatever your metaphor, mix them all you want, because all you get is this, like, you get Trump. This vomitous mass of... Ugh. Hate. <laughs> Just yeah, hate. hate. And, you know, the, the thing about comparing the two of them as well is, um, and I mean, this is, I, I guess you can call it a woman's perspective. I really we I like hate those. I hate to come at it that way because I feel like it, it it should in part be a universal perspective or or at least a rational perspective to look at own it. Come on, bring it on, bring it on. Well, to look at how, exactly how qualified she is and what she has at her disposal and her credentials and the fact that she has to share a stage with a man like Trump and have them be compared as though that they are equals. And myself and a lot of women I know, and, I, and I've seen a lot of women bloggers and journalists touch on this, is that we're all getting, uh, it, we have this sense of, of solidarity with her about it because almost all of us have been in a position where we have been put up against somebody, usually in this context, it's a man who does not deserve to be in the same place that we are, who has not worked as hard as we have, who does not have the qualifications that we do, but by virtue of the fact that he is a man, we have to entertain him. We have to entertain his lack of knowledge, his lack of skill. Um, and so a, a lot of us are watching these debates and just getting s nauseated at having to watch the highest office in this country be reduced to that, you know, um, it's a sideshow. Yeah. And it's, it is a historic moment for women, um, that, that Hillary is a candidate and that she very well may take the presidency. Um, but it kind of all speaks to us on this visceral level of just like, gosh, like, where does it end? When, when is, is this ever going to be something that we don't have to watch happen to each other or happen to us? Um, where we have to be insulted like this and that we have to have everything that we do, everything that we say, all of our education, um, you know, kind of ignored in favor of the fact that there's this guy over here who's not terribly good at anything. You can say he's a good businessman. That doesn't make it true. Um, who is hateful and vile and just the extreme epitome of just that self-righteous, disgusting, pervasive ignorance that exists in the dredges of this country. And that we still have to say, you know, well, Hillary and her emails, or she's too shrill, or I would never vote for her because of what her husband did. It's like Bill's and not it's, running. Yeah. <laughs> imagine, you know? Um, and, and what does he do? He brings out, the the women that Bill was philandering with, mm -hmm. and puts them in and also, the, puts them in the be, audience in front of her. Let's be honest. At least some of Bill's it has been confirmed even by him. Some of Bill's uh, dalliances were what's the word that Rush doesn't like or understand? Consensual, <laughs> maybe unethical, oh, yeah. but consensual. Yeah, yeah, all of that and and a bit more. Um, Amber, while while you're on on your uh, your quite justified feminist soapbox i want i want to hear uh the same perspective on the women for trump oh god what, uh, well, why there's this, well, there's this thing I, called internalized misogyny okay and <laughs> I, i'm serious Go what, on. well what happens is that when you are steeped in an environment to to hate yourself and to not look out for your best interests. And you add that to something like a lack of education um, in some cases and, and, and another, I can't say that's across the board because in some cases these women are educated. Um, 
But when you get so used to that, you you start to take it as truth. I would have to look up the exact wording of this study, but I know it was done, where they talked about how you you only have to hear a, a statement a certain amount of times that after it's been reinforced enough, you start to take it as just fact. Mm, um, yes, I, I see Stephen is doing his Google foo right now. So we, on, we, on many things, I'm actually responding to a friend who is a woman who is supporting Trump, and it hurts me. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, oh. Mm, okay. Yes. I, I actually I didn't want to jump on her thing, but she brought up one particular the, the Hillary defending a rapist against the little girl he raped, which didn't and, happen. Well, no, she did. But well, no, 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 but I mean, yeah, I, I know. Pro bono defender and was required to because that was her job. Yeah, but laughing about it. No, she wasn't laughing about that. That was, yeah. No, That's you're weird. you're completely right. <sighs> I'm sorry. I've heard that too many times. It just it hurts me every time. Like no, no, wrong, utter mm -hmm. wrong. Yeah, and I've seen people try to explain that to you know other people too, as like she didn't have a choice. Well, we all have a choice. No, not in in. When you're a uh, lawyer, you're a lawyer. You know? yep. Um, but you know what happens is you just internalize it, and it becomes your truth. Um, mm -hmm. It becomes the thing that you have always seen the uh, and heard about yourself and about other people. Um, and you just become so in it becomes so embedded in you that yeah. it colors your vision of everything that's happening around you. So you have women who will tout the the very misogynist um, things that Trump says and the, and the things that other people say about why a woman can't be president. Um, I think we've all seen that insane Daily Show special. Um, yeah. And oh. and I mean that's it, it's it's a type of brainwashing. It's a type of you know a, a crabs in the bucket mentality almost of um, you know if 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 one of us were to break that mold, it would challenge everything that we've ever believed and everything that we've been told. And that's a very uncomfortable position to put us in. Therefore, we don't want to see it happen. Ah, yes, yes. The the inconvenient truth versus the uh, comfortable lie. Yeah, and it's it's scary um, and it's saddening, you know, to, to it's, it's infuriating, but also, you know, to look at some of these women and be like, how you must feel about yourself you know, and, and how you must limit yourself every day of your life and what you must have been told about yourself. It's, it's sad. It, it makes me literally sad for them and, and not even in like a pitying or, or cruel way, but just in a very, a genuine, I, I feel sad that they've been through that kind of conditioning. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's similar. You were mentioning the cult-like behavior, which of course then, you know, leads leads this atheist to, you know, talk about religion. Go and I see the same thing with almost all the religions out there are very patriarchal. Mm -hmm. And just watching the women, you know, just laud their faith so much. and mm -hmm. so, But you know it's oppressing you. Yeah. Well, I mean, all when you... The time. <laughs> And, and that's that's a big part of it too. In some cases, you know, just to illustrate like how deeply embedded it is, when you grow up with the idea that you are responsible for original sin, that you are responsible for the fall of paradise, that it's kind of heavy you, for a kid. Yeah, that that you are by nature deceptive. You know, Eve giving the apple to Adam. We're all made he, evil, but women are more evil. Yeah, exactly. And to have, you know, God in the in the Bible, you know, mm -hmm. say, well, now that you've done this thing, women are going to suffer in childbirth. And yeah. to have that be painted as a thing that you must endure because God said so, you know, it it's just it's so deeply rooted and it goes Now we don't have to just pick on on Christianity. That's Oh also, no, absolutely. Not. That's the Abrahamic religions right yeah. there what you're describing. Yeah, exactly. So so we got Judaism, we've got Christianity, and we've got Islam all wrapped mm -hmm. up because hey guys, you're cousins. Yeah. <laughs> you all yeah, you all got the same core. <laughs> you know. But I mean even even something as uh you know, as far back as that can really shape your view of yourself and and of women in general. So that's another part of it. Well, yeah. talk, expanding beyond that, I remember I came across a story. I'm actually trying to find it. 
where, ah, there it is. It's an Arizona school that sent girls to a mandatory Christian abstinence assembly. <gasps> I saw boys you got to go to a voluntary dating seminar. Yeah, I saw you post that earlier. Well, dating, welcome yeah. to the hell and political <laughs> hellscape that and wasteland that is my Facebook. <laughs> I, was I apologize so and I don't apologize. No, that's okay. I mean, you've seen the stuff that I've posted in the last 24 hours, so. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> but you're also going back to what you said earlier about, you know, people believing lies and, you know, the comfortable lie versus uncomfortable truth. Mm -hmm. Is it amusing to anyone else? And I mean amusing in the, the dark way. Sure, that essentially the Republican Party and the Republican machine, they're talking about Fox News and all that kind of stuff, which does yeah. the whole thing of the, and I've seen documentaries like Outfoxed, and such, which went into this and actually talked about this, where if you tell a lie enough times, it becomes the truth. Or if you mm -hmm. enough, it becomes the truth. And the fact that they are literally quoting Yosef Goebbels. Because <laughs> he's the one who said that originally. Well, now that we've come all the way around to Nazis, I think that's the end of the conversation. <laughs> I, just, I was looking at the quote, like, <laughs> crap, really? He said that? So, yes. <laughs> yes. Wait, wait, oh, they, what, what, they, they had the propaganda... Down, absolutely down, and we could we could also look at North Korea too. You know how the, how they have lauded you know their dear leader of, up to to godhood status basically, and that mm -hmm. you know uh, the rest of the world doesn't like us because of, they're jealous of all of our accomplishments. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow. <laughs> wow. Well, once again, once again, we were able to prove Goddard's law. Yes. Yeah. So yes, once we've now that we've come all the way around to Nazis, um, that that is pretty much the way the internet works. If you could talk about something long enough, it will eventually land on Nazis, and at that point, you're done. So <laughs> that concludes uh, O'Reilly Radio episode 129A, and stay tuned, folks, because we'll have 128B in just a minute. Remember, um, you know, I didn't I didn't want to cut in on what you were saying, but it's kind of akin to um women in domestic violence situations that, oh yeah absolutely you know oh you just never see him at his best it, you mm -hmm. only see the bad or you only see the results of the bad and mm -hmm. you know kind of explaining away that treatment because it's the only way they'll get that love or whatever it is they feel they need to validate mm -hmm. themselves yeah it's part of the cycle of abuse you know where um you have the um, the period of time, the honeymoon phase is what they call it, where like everything is so, so good. And then you have the growing tension and then you have the explosion and then you have the reconciliation and it cycles back around to the honeymoon period and it just, it repeats itself. Um, and you, you kind of end up, you know, well, things were so good, what it, what happened? What, you know, it, it must have just been this one time or it must have just been, you know, he gets so angry with, with his job sometimes and, and I'm not helping. What can I do to what did I do wrong? What did? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, yeah, it's very much like that. You absolutely. <laughs>